Hello everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian, thanks for joining me. It's a snowstorm outside this evening and I thought, well, in the morning I'm gonna be firing up the snowblower and dealing with that, so why not record some videos this evening? So for all you watch nuts out there that like a little bit more detail about how watches work and their varying complications, this is another entry in my How It Works series and specifically this video very briefly goes over the day-date complication. I'm particularly excited about wrist check today because I picked up a nearly new watch in a sale. I've been watching for this for a while, and that's a Christopher Ward Morgan Series Aero 8 chronometer. This thing is so me. I love black, white, and red together. This has, if you, if you have a hand-wound movement, having that power reserve is a great addition. My favorite complication, the small seconds at six, and this watch is just is so me. I particularly like the reverse design on these Chris Ford SH21 watches, and I have a video coming out about the same time as this day-date complication video where I'm gonna go in depth with the SH21 because I happen to have three watches that have the SH21, and I'm gonna give you lots of up-close shots, talk about the design characteristics, just beautiful watch, beautiful movement, and I can't wait to talk more about that. So watch for that video because that's coming up about the same time as this day-date complication video. I also wanna do my sort of regular plug for what I think is one of the best watch apps on the market. If you have an iPhone slash iOS and you wanna keep track of your watch collection, then you should look into Watchy. I typically link to information about it in the video description below. So if you have the time, be sure to check out the iOS app Watchy. Now my very first video in the series was on the date complication. So it might be helpful to go back and watch that video so that you can get some context, at least how the date wheel is connected to the keyless works. Think crown and time setting, date setting. This video is not gonna go into detail on how the date complication works. I already did that, it's a little bit of a longer video, but it gives you plenty of context for understanding how the date and the date are connected to each other. But specifically, I'm just gonna show you the components that are somewhat typical of a day wheel that's added on to the date complication and that whole setup with the keyless works. So this is a video about that, a little bit more detail. I hope you enjoy it. So let's get right to it. Okay, so here we're looking at three watches and then a standalone movement. And each of these are a variation of the day date complication. And I'm showing you these just to give you variety, both in the looks and the movements. Each of these is a different movement. So here we have, you know, one of these popular Casios. This is the MRW200H. I love this watch. This is what I wear to places like the beach or water park, stuff like that. Just an excellent 100-meter uh, uh, dive-style watch. Even has a bezel that moves around the Casio. This is, you know, this is 20, 30 bucks, something like that. So this is just a fun little watch to have around. I love getting it wet. Um, it's done really well. It looks like new, and this has been used pretty heavily. This has what they call the Casio 5125. It's really a Miyota 2305 movement and would run you, if you're going to buy one, less than $10. This is a Christopher Ward C7, and I've actually got this one up for sale. I just don't wear it too much. It's a beautiful watch, but um, this is a COSC certified chronometer. This is an ETA 2836-2. If you were going to buy one of these movements. This is a really high quality movement. Again, it's an ETA, it's COSC certified, day date, and this would run you about $200, give or take, depending on, again, if you're buying one off or in bulk, something like that. And here I have my Hampton Nanook. The reason I bought this watch is because it was a reasonable price for a full day in terms of the day date complication. So you can see this has the full day at 12 and the date at six. Really love this combination, looks great. This is the Celeta 240, and this movement costs anywhere from 150 to 200, again, sort of depending on where you're sourcing it from, you know, how many you're buying, et cetera, et cetera. There is a Celeta version of the ETA 2836, which is the Celeta 220. So if you wanted the you know, shortened date here at three o'clock or the full day, both ETA and Celeta make both of those different movements. Again, all day-date complications. One more thing I want to say about these movements is that the Casio is quartz. So today is Friday the 7th. Of course, I have this set. I just put it in the box. It stays, you know, accurate. The other three are all automatics. So the ETA, the Celeta, and this Chinese movement are all automatics. However, on this 
Chinese DG2803, I have removed the rotor uh, so I could get the plates a little easier as I was you know, tinkering with it for other purposes, but these are all automatics. Now, one thing I'm showing as part of the video is how to, to set these appropriately. I just want to show how these different day date complications can work in terms of their implementation. Now, the Hampton has a screw down crown. So the first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the crown, pops out. Usually the day date complication is set at first position. So when I pull to first position, then I can turn clockwise and counterclockwise to set the date and the day. Now, just like I mentioned in the date complication, you want to set both the date and the day of the week to the day before. So if today is Friday the 7th, then I need to set the day to Thursday and the date to the 6th. And that's just the proper way to go about setting this. So first position, I'm going to turn clockwise. You can see I get the date. And I'm going to take this up to the 6th. Again, today is Friday the 7th. And then I'm going to turn counterclockwise. And notice that on the movement, a rotation turns the day halfway. So a couple rotations and you'll get a full day. And so there's Saturday. Again, I'm going to take this to Thursday. This is so you know whether you're talking about AM or PM. So now once I have that set, it's about 2 o'clock. I'm going to use my Casio over here. So it's, ah, sorry, I didn't set this to daylight savings time yet. It's actually almost 1. So if I was going to set this, I would pull this out to the time setting position 2. And then you'll see whenever I get around to midnight, that was noon, apparently. See, that's why you set it this way to the day before. Now, you'll see these both flip at the same time on this Acelita 240, SW240. So you get close to midnight, and then at right midnight, you'll see both the day flip to Friday and this to the 7th. And then now I know if it gets 1 o'clock, I'm going to go all the way back around to noon. And then I know I'm at a.m. or p.m. correctly, right? So this is p.m., so it's about 1 p.m. And then I can push it in all the way, and that date set correctly. Just wanted to show you how the day flips halfway. If you remember back in the date complication video, a lot of these corrector wheels for day and date have a spoke on either side, and so the rotations get you halfway there, and they're using that same sort of implementation on this movement. I'm actually going to show you a graphic of a similar movement up close to show you what the components look like. And that's going to be more equivalent to this ETA 2836. Or if you're talking about the Saleta version, it is the SW220. And same thing. Now these date wheels and day date wheels can be different colors because this is white wheel with black text. You can have black wheels with white text. Those are the most common ones. And then sometimes you will have movements that have the Sunday in red. Sometimes Saturdays are in blue. Those are the common color combinations you'll see. Another difference among these different complications, where they're manufactured, where they're being uh, expected to be sold at. I'm in the U.S., so a lot of movements, for example, this Chinese movement here, has two languages on it. And you'll see how that works whenever you rotate the, the day wheel. But this has English, and the other abbreviations on this particular movement are Spanish. Again, just sort of three or four letter abbreviations of the day of the week. So Dom, Lun, uh, Mar, the, uh, these are Mir, those are all Spanish abbreviations. Then this full day is just the day, just one language, English. You can get it in other languages. And then if we're going to look here, this again is the ETA 2836. This has French. And so not only do we have different color combinations, uh, we have different language combinations that are possible depending on, again, the market that it's intended for going to. So as always, when you're setting one of these, usually first position gives you day date, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. This works uh, opposite directions in terms of day date from the uh, Saleta movement that we had. But notice when I turn clockwise, I'm going to get the date. And always, before you start setting the day or the date, make sure you're in a safe place. I like to be around, you know, 6 o'clock, give or take, and you will get uh, in a safe location for adjusting a quick setting. If you adjust between the hours of 10 and 2, you're really taking a risk um, in terms of 
harming the movement, again, depending on uh, how good of a movement it is. So anyway, I'm going to go back, I'm going to save spot, I'm going to go back to first position, and again, clockwise, I'll get the date, so we'd get that wherever we want it, and then counterclockwise, you will see it switches between the day of the week, and this has English and French. So there's Monday, again, some of the, of course, the Romance languages, the, the, a lot of the abbreviations are going to be the same, but there are differences between them also. So you pick, you know, which language, which day of the week, and then you will set it. There's no red on this one. There's no red on here for Sundays, but this English, Spanish, Chinese version over here does. So you'd set it to the day of the week you want. Again, before, this would be setting it if it was going to be Sunday the 30th, and then you'd pull out to the second position, and when you get to 12 o'clock, you will see that they flip at the same time. Another difference between higher end movements and lower end movements is at what time do the day and the date flip? With higher end movements, whether those be Swiss, German, made, that sort of thing, you're going to have these things changing in parallel at as close to 12 a.m. as possible. But then you're going to have some other movements where they're going to change at different times because of where the spokes are on the calendar wheel. And I'll show you about that on this older movement here. So that's uh, another example. And to show you again some of that variety, let's look at this Casio. Now, this has the correct date. The time's incorrect, but I want to show you the color combination. So I've got this pulled out to first position, and I'm going to turn counterclockwise which is going to give me the date on this one. You can see that the wheels, depending on the complications, are going to turn uh, one way or the other. Again, that all comes down to what exact movement. Some of them are going to flip bottom up. Some of them are going to be top down. Some of them is going to be the date clockwise and the day counterclockwise and vice versa. So it just all varies by, by movement. So I'm going to turn counterclockwise, and I want to make sure that this one stays accurate, but I want to show you the variety here. So I'm going to take this around to the 6th. Okay, now I'm going to turn clockwise, and you can see again, we've got language stuff going on. I thought this one had the blue, but it doesn't. I have a different watch that has the blue on it for the date um, of the week. But we're going to set this to Thursday. Okay, this is a nice Casio, so I'm going to wait till it gets there. All right, now I wanted to show you with this is when these things flip. So we're going to get around here to 12, and you can see at 12 a.m. the date flipped, but the day didn't. It's going to flip as we get closer to 2 o'clock. That's why I said it, a lot of movements, it's a range. Sometimes this day can flip earlier, you know, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock. just depends on the implementation. So you can see as I get closer to 2, then you get that happening to the first la language on here. And you'll see as I get close to four, it flips to the proper language. So again, these implementations are, are different depending on the exact movement. So it's always interesting to look at that. And like I said, it's almost one o'clock. What time is it? 107. Okay, so we're going to get around here and I'll just set this to eight. All right, so I wanted to show you some of that variety in terms of language, implementation, style, uh, interaction with the crown, the keyless works. But now let's take a look at the actual complication in more detail and up close. And we'll do that with this DG2803 movement. Okay, one thing I forgot to do is to show you the Morgan C1 Aero 8 chronometer by Christopher Ward. This is my newest watch. Love this thing. Love that power reserve nine, small second at six. Can't wait to talk about those complications in this series as well, but this is my newest edition. It's a beautiful watch. So more video coming on this soon with the SH-21. All right, so snap in here a little bit closer. I'm gonna use this, again, Chinese movement to just kind of illustrate the point. I'm not gonna go quite as in depth as I did with the date complication. And really, if you wanna understand how the day works, then it's best to start with the date complication. So go back and watch that video. But what you basically have is a second wheel added on the interior, sometimes the exterior, again, depending on the movement. And these wheels are independent of each other with some extra gearing added so that you can operate them correctly with the crown and so that the calendar correction wheel can flip them both 
whenever you get to 12 a.m., give or take. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the day wheel off so you can just kind of see the extra parts that are added on uh, in the complication. Usually the wheel is attached. It sits on top of the hour wheel, and you can kind of see there's a C-clip here. Sometimes these are E-clips. It's really just a spring clip that keeps pressure of this day wheel against the hour wheel so it stays in place and so that the gearing is meshed and the teeth are uh, suppressed against each other so that it works correctly. But I'm going to take this little screwdriver and I'm going to remove this little spring clip here and the wheel will pop right off. And you'll be able to see the extra mechanism that's added to correct the day, like when you're setting it and whatnot. Again, this is an old movement. I really don't care about it too much. Uh, but let me get this removed. I'm just going to add a little bit of pressure there. It really just eases off without too much effort. There. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I get it close to the top. I'm just going to put my finger under it so this doesn't go flying into oblivion. So I don't lose the part I can put it back. You can kind of see there, I'm just raising the clip on the top. Again, it's just a little spring clip, keeps pressure of that day wheel. Whoop, pop goes. As you hear, it's what it looks like, just a little clip. Again, just holds, keeps pressure against the wheel and the hour wheel so it stays in place. And then, this wheel will pop right off. Different ways you can uh, pull it off, but I'm just gonna go around the edge and see. Boop, pops right off. Okay, so now if you remember back to the date complication video with the Chinese movement we showed, uh, I showed the Swiss movement in a little bit more uh, clarity, but there is a wheel in here that as I spin it around, you can see inside of this little hole right there. There's a pin that comes around. It's going to push down. That little tab is touching the date wheel spokes, and we'll just push it down and rotate the, the date. And it's going to be one on each side. But also notice that there is now another little component right here that as I turn the date, it's going backwards. Now watch what happens when I go clockwise on this movement. If I go clockwise, it goes down. Now, this pin is going backwards, so you see that flipping up instead of down. And that's a very basic implementation, not too complicated. But So this pushes down on something. What is that pushing down on? You see nothing extra has been added there. Okay, But if you look with me, look at this date wheel on the opposite side, you notice there's a gear. Now this is soldered. It's attached to this day wheel so this doesn't come off um, it's I don't know if it's just soldered on there or some sort of adhesive but on this particular movement but that sits down in the middle like so and then as I turn this is going to push down and it's going to snap the day around so that's the correction gearing that's what I would call it is it's what's come on called in you know, specification list for parts for movements and stuff it's a corrector so that's the corrector. And then we have the calendar wheel, which again, we showed this on the Chinese movement and the Swiss movement. This is the calendar wheel. So this is going to set both the day and the date whenever it's doing its normal timekeeping. Now I've moved this to a position where you can see a little bit better. On the calendar wheel over here, there's a tab right here. It's kind of underneath of this plate that's sitting on top, sort of protecting everything, keeping everything in place with some pressure. But there's a little tab here, and that's the calendar wheel correcting on this side when it gets to 12 a.m. So you'll see that moving. Again, pay attention to that rotation. I'm trying to keep the light so it's reflecting in a way. You can see that little tab. Now as that gets close to 12 a.m., you'll see it's going to grab on. See a little tab right there? It's grabbing onto the date. It's going to flip it forward. Okay, so we're going to flip the 25th there. And you'll also notice there is another point on the top of this calendar wheel that's going to slide into this 
handy dandy wheel just kind of sitting here just maintained in in place with this screw but freely moving and this is the calendar correction for the day again there's that gear underneath quick set was using this little tab over here and then again a little after 12 o'clock could be one two o'clock you'll see again i'll use light as i turn this forward notice it flips this gear which is going to turn the day wheel like so so that it gets the correct date and then that'll go around 24 hours later we'll get again there's that tab getting close it's going to grab the date flip that and then you'll see the change of the day all of those flipping both forward and that's just how this is implemented on this you know low cost movement on a higher end swiss movement you're going to see a little bit fancier gearing here so that when you're doing the the calendar uh, correction or the watch is doing it i suppose whenever it's doing its normal timekeeping it's going to do those flips of the wheels simultaneously. I didn't feel like taking one of the higher cost Swiss day dates apart for this video, but this gives you the idea. I'll give you the sort of Swiss context with the documentation. All right, so we looked at a low cost Chinese version, but I wanna show you at least in the documentation what this kind of looks like on a more sophisticated Swiss movement. This is the Celita 220. There's also the 240, which is the full day which is a different wheel combination with the full day but this is more common you'll see date on the exterior day on the interior and what's really nice is that Celeta publishes their specifications so someone that's tinkering with watches can kind of see how you disassemble and assemble them the different parts names etc so we're going to go down here a little bit and I want to show you the page that has the components where concerned about right now and also all these little red markers are where oil is applied to certain things so for example here's the top of the movement over here on the lower left and we've talked about the calendar wheel which sits right here in the upper left of the movement on this particular one you can see that's number 35 and it's zoomed in a little here at the top on the left hand side and this is the wheel that will move the date and day naturally at around 12 a.m. So there are different spokes on this that interact with those wheels so that it corrects it correctly. And here on the right side you'll see the date wheel. And we talked in the last video on the date complication about how the keyless works and the components in here that auto flip that whenever you're correcting it to set the time. So not only do we have the date correction but we have a couple other components sitting here but mainly the number 44 which is the day corrector. So as you can see, just much like the date, there's a spoke on either side of that component. This sits down here, right here next to the keyless works, a little bit closer so that it can interact with the gearing underneath of the day wheel. The day wheel comes down, sits on top. This is between the movement keyless works and the day wheel. And as you get this into position one, you flip it around, it switches between the different languages so a full rotation is a full day a half rotation is between the languages and I just wanted to point out these components so we've got the natural as the movement is working calendar wheel moving over here on the left you can see those components here very similar to the the Chinese implementation you've got quick set and you have the calendar wheel but at the same time you've got you know a little bit of a different view of how this thing is put together. This documentation is pretty good. And again, if you wanted to go back up, you can go to like the parts list, for example, up here. You can see what names of things are. So, for example, 35 I mentioned there. You see, it's the calendar driving wheel. I just call it the calendar wheel usually. You got parts like 44, that's your day corrector, as shown as it's assembled. You got the day indicator, uh, day indicator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can see the parts list in here. But it's kind of useful to see how this thing is put together in the documentation. So wanted to show you that for the Swiss movement, but it's generally the same idea, even though we looked at a cheaper Chinese implementation of the day date complication. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed another How It Works video and looking at three different variants of the day date complication. I'm thinking in the next video to do maybe either small seconds, a 24-hour wheel, or a dual time. 
I've got all of those and can go in a little bit more detail with them. But if you have any particular feelings about it, feel free to comment. Subscribe if you haven't. This is Watch Complications. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. But also, mainly, check out the blog. Go to watchcomplications.com. Later.